Thank you very much, uh, Madam Deputy Speaker. Britain is under attack, not in a physical sense, but in a philosophical, ideological and historical sense. Our heritage is under a direct assault. There are those who seek to call the very sense of what it is to be British today into question. Attempts are being made to rewrite our history, to indoctrinate our children with anti-British propaganda and to seek to impose an alternative worldview. Our institutions have been undermined. Attempts have been made to sully the reputations of towering figures from British history because the views of their time may not conform to today's values. The rise of the power, reach and influence of social media in recent years has been highly influential in increasing the pace and spread of what is a broadly left-wing, anti-British, anti-Western and anti-capitalist rhetoric. A domino phenomenon is being witnessed as a succession of national institutions and organisations accept, seemingly without question or critical analysis, the new orthodoxy. The new orthodoxy has become colloquially known as the woke perspective. In modern-day Britain, the woke viewpoint includes attacking the historical concept of Britain by reinterpreting British history in a slanted and decontextualised manner using modern viewpoints and value judgments. In woke eyes, the British Empire is no longer seen as a modernising, civilising force that spread trade, wealth and the rule of law around the globe. Instead, it is viewed as a racist, colonialist, oppressive force that invaded sovereign foreign countries, plundered them and enslaved their people en masse. Great British heroes such as Vice Admiral Horatio Nelson, Sir Winston Churchill, until comparatively recently almost universally regarded in a highly favourable light, now have their reputations besmirched. With pleasure. And thank you for bringing this matter to the House as well. When we record greatness, we celebrate men and women who are inherently imperfect. When I look at Churchill's statue in Parliament Square, I honour what Churchill represented, duty, fortitude and an unwavering belief that when we British stood together, we could not be defeated. Does the honour member agree that they, these are worthy of celebration and honour today, and by tearing them down, we make no statement other than we won't acknowledge our past, which makes me fear for our future? I thank the honourable gentleman for his comments. I agree with them unreservedly. Um, I also would like to acknowledge the honour of being intervened upon by um, uh, Mr. Shan. Oh, sorry, the honourable gentleman. Um, I gather it's a rite of passage for any member of parliament. You're not really a member of parliament until uh, you have been intervened upon by the, the honourable gentleman. So I, I'm very grateful to him. Madam Deputy Speaker, Britain, a small country on the northwestern edge of the European continent that led the world in the fields of science, industry, democracy, trade, law, the arts and much more besides, that stood and fought often for long periods alone for freedom against European tyranny in the shape of Napoleon and Nazism and successfully opposed Soviet communism is reinterpreted in the woke perspective solely as a slave-owning force for oppression and evil. The slanted views of the woke perspective focus very firmly on the past. Its preoccupation is with rewriting that past in order to alter the present. By rewriting Britain's long and varied history to focus solely on slavery without any acknowledgement of Britain's huge role in stamping it out, they seek historical justification for their ideological belief that modern Britain is inherently racist with an entirely shameful past. Uh, Gladden. Okay. Would my honourable friend agree that woke activists are actually entitled to their views, of course, and to expressing them, but they are not entitled to do so in terms of imposing their views as they were in any way authoritative or unchallengeable? That is, in fact, would you not agree, an, ar an arrogant and divisive standpoint to take? Speaker, I do agree with my honourable friend. I think that in any democracy, any mature democracy, the right to hold alternative views and to express them is a right that is unchallengeable. However, what I don't think is unchallengeable is an attempt to stamp out contrary views, to cancel people, to bully and intimidate them, and to make them fear for their, their safety, simply because they have an alternative view. This woke view of our nation's history, Madam Deputy, Deputy Speaker, fails to recognise the open, tolerant and global Britain, which is a force for good in the world, a champion of democracy, equality, peace and prosperity, 
that was forged in the empire. Their mission is to destroy the accepted sense of Britain in order to impose a countervailing ideological perspective, because if you delegitimize the one, it is possible to legitimize the other. And of course, there is no better way to achieve this than to topple the towering heroes on which British history balances. For example, left-wing efforts to paint Churchill as a racist are an attempt to warp our country's memory of the Second World War. And it's against this backdrop that we see a sudden push from some quarters to question the legitimacy of the statues, monuments, and even the road names of certain parts of our country. Chief amongst these, of course, is London. Our capital city has always been the political, governmental, financial, and cultural center of our country. And it therefore has many historic monuments. Unfortunately for London, it also has a mayor who has never wasted a moment to ingratiate himself with woke activists. Within days of the protests in central London last summer, Sadiq Khan announced that he would be creating a commission for a diversity in the public realm. Staggeringly, for a man who constantly pleads poverty when it comes to carrying out his core functions of building houses, running the transport system, or keeping people safe on the streets, Sadiq Khan has set aside £1.1 million of taxpayers' money for this exercise. He claims that the Commission is about putting up more monuments of historically significant black and ethnic minority figures and to aid public understanding. And this is indeed a worthy aim. But he rather let the cat out of the bag when asked last June uh, whether he thought the Commission would lead to statues being removed, and his reply was, I hope so. The Mayor's desire to rewrite history is underlined in the application pack for people aspiring to be on the Commission. In it, the Mayor states, our statues, street names, memorials and buildings have left a distorted view of the past. And he goes on to call for the Commission to further the discussion into what legacies should be celebrated. The terms of reference for the Commission stated that there will be, and I quote, a fair and transparent recruitment process, resulting in a group of 15 Commission members, in addition to the two co-chairs, with broad-ranging knowledge, expertise and lived experience relevant to the work of the Commission. Anyone who takes this at face value is either spectacularly naive or they've not been following the development of Sadiq Khan's mayoralty. In February of this year, the membership of the Commission was announced and it is fair to say that it removed any pretense that it will produce an impartial and objective historical worldview. One of the Commissioners has already been forced to resign for anti-Semitic comments he made in the past. Of the remaining commissioners, one has said, and I quote, the UK is evil, it is the common denominator in atrocities across the world and is responsible for white supremacy everywhere. Another said, Boris Johnson is an out and out complete, and then Madam Deputy Speaker, he uses an obscene four letter word beginning with C, who is overtly racist. He then goes on to express support for defunding the police. A third claimed last year that the concept of race was created by white people in order to give them power over non-white people. When setting up this commission, the mayor claimed the membership will be representative of London's diversity. Diversity of what? Certainly not diversity of thought or of political opinion. These people are hand-picked, hard-left political activists. Sadiq Khan is playing an irresponsible and dangerous game by establishing a new commission to tear down London's landmarks. The mayor expects this to be an easy, virtue-signalling PR win, but his decision has div created division and inflamed tensions in the capital. A recent poll conducted by YouGov found that 42% of Londoners oppose the plans, compared with 38% who are in favour of them. An e-petition calling for the protection of all historical statues and monuments has attracted more than 35,000 signatures of support. And Sean Bailey, the Mr Khan's Conservative opponent in the forthcoming London Mayoral election commented, and I quote, the mayor has driven wedges between communities. With his diversity commission, he's trying to rewrite British history, but he does not have the expertise or the authority to do this. He is completely correct. One of my constituents wrote to me, and I, I, I will quote this at length, I originated from Pakistan and my father was born in India. 
I am very concerned about how the identity politics and cancel culture is being promoted. I fully support those who have raised their concerns about Mr Khan's initiative about changing names of London roads and dismantling historic statues and monuments. There are no other nations or countries which will wipe out or bring disrepute to their empires or kingdoms and will actively degrade their own heroes. History is history and let it not punish our present. He continues, if we study the British Empire, the British left a huge legacy throughout its vast empire. The British made a chain of universities and medical colleges, the world's best irrigation system. It introduced a new structure of administration and it introduced democracy to the subcontinent. It built modern infrastructure, including railway tracks, bridges and railway stations. Moreover, Britain has welcomed people from north, south, east and west, and we must teach patriotism in our schools. Madam Deputy Speaker, whether we like it or not, there are many very good, some bad, and a few ugly elements in Britain's past. And it's a complicated picture filled with imperfect heroes. The notion that historical figures should be judged by today's standards will eliminate every British history, every British hero that this country holds dear. So will Sadiq Khan topple Churchill for his support for the British Empire? Will Admiral Nelson fall for living in a time when slavery existed? Will Sir Francis Drake, Oliver Cromwell, King, Charles, King James II, Lord Kitchener and William Gladstone be erased and their contributions to British history forgotten because they were flawed characters? And where do we draw the line? Should Gandhi's statue be removed because he believed that Indians were racially superior to Africans? Will Karl Marx's tomb be destroyed because of his deeply held anti-Semitism? And should Egypt's pyramids or Rome's Colosseum fall because they were built by slaves and those civilizations profited from that abhorrent trade? This is why Sadiq Khan was wrong to jump on the latest virtue signalling bandwagon. His decision to tear down statues in London risks encouraging left-wing mobs to topple statues themselves and far-right mobs to take them on in the streets to protect them. And the events of last summer are proof of this. Instead of posturing in this way, the Mayor of London should take a long, hard look at his record of failure, which has left communities behind in London. After five years at the helm of City Hall, it's time he took his fair share of responsibility for the challenges and the iniquities that exist in London today. On his watch, violent crime has soared to record levels and murder reached an 11-year high. Only 17,000 affordable homes have been completed in five years. 22 major transport upgrades that could regenerate communities have either been delayed or cancelled and Crossrail is three years late, £4 billion over budget and Transport for London has lost £2 billion in fares income it would otherwise have accumulated. The sad truth is that London has been saddled with a mayor who is not especially interested in the core functions of his role. There is no virtue that he won't signal, no passing bandwagon that he won't jump on and no gallery that he won't play to in his never-ending attempt to ingratiate himself with the latest trend on Twitter. Madam Deputy Speaker, pandering to woke activists in this way is deeply disturbing. The moves are illegitimate and dangerous. They will do nothing for inclusiveness. Instead, they will foster bitterness and resentment on all sides. We must not go down this route. If the Mayor of London insists on pushing ahead with this deeply divisive, virtue signalling exercise, then I believe that the government should step up to protect our national heritage and explicitly strip him of the power to dismantle it. Yeah.